Oh my gosh, I'm excited. Okay. Oh gosh, just. Hey everybody, so in this episode of Nicole Stone Outdoors, I am fishing Lake Cabotogama with Kent from Cab Outdoors. I've been up here a few times with my good friend Megan and now her husband and also her little baby. It's been a fun trip in the boat. They offer so many awesome things and you catch fish, so that's a bonus. Um, and we're just going to go over how you guys can catch walleye and bass, particularly with jigs, out here on Lake Cabotogama. So what I would typically do out here is not what we're doing. And I think that's where a lot of people maybe make mistakes is um, they want to be aggressive. They want to throw plastics, you know, they want to troll really fast. But what Kent has us doing is actually doing the most finesse jigging right under the boat. And we are using a 1 16th inch ounce jig. Um, these are the Lindy Live Bait Rigs. They have a short shank and they are absolutely perfect for putting on crawlers or leeches, which is our go-to out here. That's another thing is he's very big for both smallies and for walleye to use um, live bait. Right now, middle of summer, leeches and uh, crawlers. And then also putting them on these live bait rigs with a shorter shank so there's less uh, hook showing. You know, it's, it's that short shank, extra wide gap hook, holds the bait on. When you get up in the shallows, get on the outside of the weed lines, you know, and if you kind of zigzag in and out or pitch over the top, they pull through the grass really nice. And that's where our fish are hiding. That's where they're at right now. I mean, people think you need to go to 30 plus feet. You need to go to five, seven. I mean, that's what we're catching them in today. So what Kent is doing is he's just really holding his rod steady. It's a very slow finesse. Once in a while, he'll pop it a little bit just to... Just make sure you keep a little tension, taut line, because when they pick it up, I mean, you might feel the twitch, but you ain't gonna feel any more than that. And then all of a sudden it's dead weight, like you hooked a piece of grass, stick, drop your rod tip, feed them for a few seconds, and cross their eyes. Yeah. Walleye. Nice Walter. Yeah. Nice job. Need water. Awesome. Seven feet of water. Proof. We got it. At what time in the afternoon in the morning? Almost noon. Even at noon it works, but we highly recommend going evening and mornings. Always the best times. Awesome. That's it too. So the next thing like he just highlighted is instead of going deep, which is what I would have traditionally done, um, is go shallow. And so Ken hit all the points that we've been covering out here with him, catching a lot of fish, a lot of eater fish, uh, and it's been going shallow. So that would be the next tip for you guys if you want to catch fish out on Lake Cabotogama and find success on your trip. Caught a real big smallie. So the other option that we have been doing too, that Alex kind of went to because it's such a finesse bite, and I think that's where people err is you gotta go finesse. He's been bobber fishing and he's caught a lot of really nice fish, including a 19-inch smallie from today. So again, that to me just reiterates the fact that you need to fish this lake very finesse like because there is so much bait there is a lot of fish um isn't all that much competition for food so that way you have to kind of change it up something you might not do in central minnesota wisconsin or iowa it is going to be the way it works up here if you want to catch more fish 
as for gear, I we are running very similar rigs. All of us are. I think when you're jig fishing finesse anywhere, you're going to want to use a medium to medium light power rod, and you're going to want to use a fast to extra fast action end. Now, what that's going to do is give you enough backbone to pull in those bigger fish while having enough flexibility on the very end of your rod so that you can detect those bites. And that is what we've discovered out here is detecting those bites are crucial because even those bigger fish are very finesse when they uh, hit your line. That's a nicer fish. Nice. Hold that up. Yeah. There's a fish right below us. So when you guys are looking at this map, where we're fishing right now and pulling up a lot of these um, mid to smaller size smallies is we're actually finding them on this rocky point and uh, it's going up onto a reef and this is a great area to look especially when you see this type of structure on your map but then you also correlate that to the shoreline that you see with your own eyes where you did see those weeds and you did see those rocks and you see the potential there so it's always great to rely on a map it's not always great to ignore what you see with your own eyes and i think that's kent's biggest thing is you know use your map as a guide but check out the area and make sure it looks like it's um, suitable for the fish you're targeting. All right, so when, okay you guys, so when we are doing this, you know, the trolling game is slow, finesse, he's got us going point two. Um, I know when Megan and I have hooked into fish earlier this season, it was when we were still. So slower the better right now, especially when you find these key locations um, where you're right off the, the deep water, you're up against the weed line, um, that's gonna be key. Just keep your rod still, keep your presentation still, and if you're gonna troll, keep it slow. Alex. Yep. I don't know if I'll be able to hold this one. I'm gonna have to do some chasing. This might be your sturgeon. <laughs> well, you're gonna have to reel it in. There you go. Looks like we got a sturgeon on. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Fun. Well, this is a sturgeon. Is this a big pike? Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good one. That's fun. You're holding this one. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Take it out of the net for me, will you? Get him. Oh, yeah, well. 